Hi, I'm John Biggs. I'm here with Bree Pettis of MakerBot. This is the MakerBot digitizer. This is a dwarf, and this is the digitizer. Is that right? It's a gnome. It's a gnome. All right, so we can't. We I can't finish this. <laughs> this is a uh, this is a MakerBot digitizer. It's a desktop 3D scanner. It's 1,400 bucks. You put it on your desktop. You put things on the turntable. It spins around. Lasers shoot at it, and it turns your physical objects into digital designs. And then, the next thing you know. You've jump-started the whole digital design process, and mm -hmm. interesting things are happening. So TechCrunch is primarily populated by nerds. So these guys are going to say, why can't I just get a laser pointer and a camera and a, and a pie plate and a LP record player and all kinds of other stuff and make my own? You, why, why would you buy this? So you, you could do that. You could actually go out there and, and get a record player and shine lasers at it. But the, the, the special sauce in this is how much effort and time we've put into the software. And... The software on this really makes it easy and friendly. Traditionally, 3D scanning, you, know, you create a point cloud, and then you have to mesh the point cloud, and you have to do a lot of post-processing work. This cuts that down so that you put something on here, it makes a 3D, a 3D model of it, and it wraps it up so that it's watertight and you're good to go. So I would say you could go out there and do it yourself, but if, you, if your time is valuable, this is a, a much better value. Interesting. So, and this is all made here in Brooklyn, or some of the parts are made elsewhere, is that right? Yep. So, all the, these parts are, we source these parts and assemble them in our manufacturing facility just down the way here in Brooklyn. And how does that feel to be the, probably one of the only folks who are actually making stuff out here? You know, it's awesome, actually, <laughs> because for a couple of reasons. One is that our engineers, when, when, they, when, we, you know, when we go into production, like we recently did on this, and we set up the line and we start putting things together. The engineers go down there and they see it working and they catch things that they wouldn't have caught if we were manufacturing really far away. And we haven't had anything go wrong, but if it does, or if, something's, if we get parts that don't quite fit, we can make the adjustments and fix it. So we, we can really be, uh, making things in Brooklyn means you get a special ingredient, Brooklyn pride, and that means you get a better product. All right, that's very jingoistic, but uh, the- <laughs> It's true though, <laughs> it's true. So the, so the electronics are made here as well? Yeah. Uh, everything. Well, the, what we do is we assemble it here. We have a variety of, we, you know, one of the things you do when you make things is you have multiple suppliers. So um, I don't have that in my head, all of our suppliers and where they are, but we get stuff, we put it together, and we ship it out. So if I'm a Kickstarter guy, what do I need to do to make stuff locally? So if, I would say if you're, if you're getting into Kickstarter and you want to make a product, there's some really cool products that have come out. I think the thing that I would say is, is do as much of the work as you can before you launch your Kickstarter. I've subscribed to some Kickstarters where I've, I, you know, I've gotten things in the mail and I, I just completely forgot, I open it up and I don't even remember what it was because it's a year and a half since I ordered it. So I would say do as much as you can up front before you launch it. But, they, but in terms of building, sourcing locally? So, you know, there's some, there's a, there's, a, there's actually a thing that just started up called um, Dragon Innovation. They just did a Kickstarter a Kickstarter for hardware stuff, and these guys know manufacturing. So one of the things you could do is just start off working with a manufacturer. I think one of the challenges of Kickstarter is people come up with a product, and then they get overwhelmed by demand, and they, they don't make the 50 they were expecting. They were going you know, they might have made on their kitchen table. Mm -hmm. They need to make 10,000 of them, and that's, that's when you need to get help. Are you guys overwhelmed by demand? No, we're ready for demand. That was a, you know, <laughs> we, whenever we came out with new products, I would always think, okay, let's double so we're ready. And then we'd more than double, so we'd always be scrambling. So recently when we expanded into our, our Brooklyn facility, we just went, went way overboard. So that we'd, and we're, we've got a powerful manufacturing engine over there that can just crank stuff out. Great, great eminence. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Bray. Good to have you here. Thanks for watching.